Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Crossway Podcast. My name is Josh, uh, and today I wanted to spend some time uh, talking about some habits that I think we can put or start putting into practice to help us develop strong uh, Christ-centered families. Um, this this coming Sunday, our church will be in its third week of a message ser- series entitled uh, Family 35, where we've been sort of looking at different aspects of family life from a specifically Christian point of view and listening to the wisdom and insight from families and parents uh, that are actually a part of our church family. Um, and I personally have really felt conviction um, from the Holy Spirit during these past few weeks to be more intentional and more purposeful about treating my family um, as a unit, as a, as a team, and as an intimately connected small group uh, that is pursuing Jesus together. Uh, I think it can be uh, really easy for us to only focus on our individual relationships with God and time spent cultivating our spiritual development in solo, right? And of course, that's crucial, right? Probably priority number one is for you to be spending time with God uh, alone, learning and seeking out his will for your life and what he desires for you as an individual. But what I think should be right there next on the list of priorities is the spiritual health and development of your family unit, Um, So I want to talk about three things that we can do as parents uh, or three things that we can strive for as members of a family household to keep Christ at the center. Uh, Three goals I think that we can aim for to be consistent about growing spiritually as a family. And the first uh, is to Bible study and pray together as a family. Bible study and pray together. Um, And I got to admit that this is something that's really convicting to me uh, personally because my family doesn't currently do a whole lot of this together. And I think it's something that in the season of thinking about family, the Holy Spirit has really been leading me personally to take action in. Um, You know, when we typically think about doing a Bible study and spending time in prayer, we almost always either associate it with our personal devotional time um, or some other small group we're a part of, say at church. Um, But I think for some reason we neglect or, or really we just miss the importance of studying the Word of God and spending time communicating with Him together as a family right, to seek after and understand God's will uh, and to be of one mind in that process together as a family. And that is really uh, one of the major benefits of a group sort of study, right, Uh, the unity that is born out of the process of desiring God's heart uh, together. I can speak uh, from my own life. Uh, Crossway uh, Crossway Church's youth pastor Chandler and our experienced pastor Colton and myself Uh, We regularly spend time discussing and seeking and challenging each other in our understanding and our living out of God's Word. And an important byproduct of that process that I have noticed is a tremendous amount of unity in our lives that flows directly from the truth of God's Word. Now, just imagine if all of us who are family members strived for that type of unity together— Right, If we regularly uh, looked to sharpen each other and hold each other accountable uh, and petition and praise God together as a household by setting aside time together to study and pray, and really to bring that stereotypical small group vibe uh, to the heart of our family activity, I think we would not only begin to see spiritual growth, um, but we would also see this immense unity uh, overflowing from the heart, the heart of God uh, in our families. And so a, a good step that I think we can take to care for the spiritual well-being of our families uh, is to commit to a regular Bible study and time of prayer together. Now, maybe that looks like gathering together to read a chapter in the New Testament and then spending some time 
talking about it together and praying over it together. Uh, Maybe it means following a devotional plan together and discussing and challenging each other in that plan. Um, And by the way, if you are struggling to figure out where to start in a process like this, uh, our church can actually help you get started. Uh, One of the resources we have started providing for the members of our church, um, and really not just members of our church, even if you're just a listener of this podcast, we have provided you with an account uh, with a company called Right Now Media, which is basically just a gigantic repository of Bible studies, devotionals, and plans that you can access absolutely free and maybe get your family started in spending time studying together. Um, and these are resources that our church pays for, for you, because we think this kind of purposeful spiritual development um, is so important. So, If you want to check those resources out, uh, you can go to crossway.news and click on the Right Now Media button to get access to all of that material and maybe just find uh, a starting point for your family to begin spending time uh, with God together. Uh, The second thing that I think you can do to care for and be purposeful about the spiritual development of your family uh, is to make coming to church a priority. Uh, Make participating in the body of Christ something that is important to your family. Uh, I think sometimes, uh, and I've been here, we can think much too narrowly narrowly about what church actually is, about what the church looks like, right? Like it's just a place to come and learn something about God for an hour on Sunday and maybe attend a couple events uh, throughout the year. But let let me actually read to you Paul's letter to the church in Corinth uh, and read how he explains the church to them in order to emphasize the importance of their participation. Um, And it's a a little long, but uh, I think it's important. So let's read it. Let's read this together. Uh, In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 12 through 27, Paul says, just as a body, the one has many parts, But all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. Uh, Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. But God has put the body together so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Um, So Paul here is stressing the importance of participating in the body of Christ because we each have something unique to contribute to it. And when we fail to participate in that community, we are actually hurting the body. So something that I think is crucial, is vital for our family's spiritual health and development is to come and participate in this church community where we are able to sharpen and encourage one another in ways that would be really inaccessible apart from this larger body, right? To not have our family neglect the community and the unique gifting that is offered in and to the body of believers of the local church, right? The church body is Um, a venue for building up and encouraging your family in a uniquely relevant way, right? Parents speaking into other parents' lives, teenagers speaking into and being cared for in ways that are specific to their stage of life uh, and, and by other people like them. The church body is the means for the diverse gifts of the Holy Spirit to cooperate together and for your household to be a participant 
in that. So something, uh, again, that I think is vital for the discipleship of your family is to be active attenders in your local church, uh, to not neglect to come to and participate in the body of Christ. And the last thing that I think families can do, you as a family can do, or you can strive for in your family, uh, and specifically something parents can do uh, to not only develop your family's relationship with God, but also bring some resiliency uh, to your family's faith, is to train your family, uh, and more urgently, train your children, if you have some, to understand and defend their Christian faith. Uh, Over the past several decades probably, our society has portrayed uh, and thought of the Christian worldview as something that really has no more substance than a fairy tale, right? Saying you believe in Jesus Christ to many in modern America feels like you're making a statement similar to saying you believe in Santa Claus. Uh, And many Christians themselves have stopped viewing their Christian worldview as something with any sort of explanatory benefit Um, or contribution to truth, or any sort of furthering of knowledge, and instead, uh, they see it as something that's only for comfort or meeting some psychological need. And this can be really devastating for your family because we all know that society has a deep distaste for a lot of what Christians believe, right? Society doesn't like it. Uh, what, What Christians say God thinks about things is often extremely countercultural. Um, And if it's not already happening to you or to your kids, especially in college, your kids are going to be bombarded with every sort of anti-Christian, God-hating philosophy that they could possibly be bombarded with. And so I think a vital part of your family's spiritual health and their spiritual stamina uh, and something that will really develop boldness and make the connection between the head uh, and the heart for your children especially is to train them more deeply in understanding and defending the truth of the Christianity, uh, defending the existence of God and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, Now, for a a lot of families, I think this might be a foreign idea uh, or unfamiliar territory, and I totally get that. Um, And our church is actually, uh, Crossway Church, is actually thinking about these things for your family and actually working on putting some things into place to help you accomplish uh, not, not just this, but all of the things we've been talking about. But uh, there are resources available even now in that Right Now Media database, like we talked about earlier, um, or even on previous episodes of the podcast where we have touched on some of these topics uh, and recommended resources there. So that may be a good place to start. But I urge you, uh, and as a testimony from my own spiritual journey, don't neglect to think about and work through the hard questions related to the truth of your family's Christian worldview, right? Talk about these things together and work through them together for the sake of clarity, unity, uh, growth, and resiliency, really, uh, in your Christian faith, and especially with your children uh, and their Christian faith. Um, and that really is what I think uh you will start to see happen as you put these disciplines in place for your family, right? By studying God's Word and praying together uh, and attending and participating in your local church body and working uh, as a family to explain and support your faith together, um, you will grow and love God more as you grow closer to each other. Well, thanks so much for listening. Uh, Guys, if you are interested in checking out more episodes of the podcast, you can find them on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any of your favorite streaming platforms. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you again next time. (music) 